score this morning, Cherie Mitchell, Tyler Trimble, and Dominique Hunter. Good crowd this morning. As it is education day here on the campus of the University of the Pacific. Every year the school invites elementary and middle school kids from around the Stockton area. They're expecting about 1,600 kids or so. So it's a good crowd despite the early morning start. We'll see how that impacts these two teams with the 11 a.m. tip-off. Tigers, they are fresh off a loss to Santa Clara in their last game. It was a road loss, 80 to 66. They come in having lost eight of 10 now and nine of 12. Meanwhile, for Gonzaga, they're fresh off a seven point win at Portland. It was the middle game of a three game trip. With the win, the Zags take over first place in the West Coast Conference. They are seven and zero as we take a look at the Pacific Tigers starting lineup one more time. Tigers come in with an overall record of 7-11. They are 2-5 in conference play. They are currently in eighth place. Tigers in their all-white home jerseys, trimmed in black and orange. Gonzaga in their traveling reds, trimmed in white and red. The tip is won by Gonzaga. And we are underway. Glad you could join us on this late morning start, whether you're in between classes, maybe having a Late breakfast, perhaps an early lunch. Wherever you are, glad you could join us. Trong. Trying to get it inside and is poked away by Ennis. And it'll remain Gonzaga basketball with 12 seconds on the shot clock. Pacific, very good road team. They have a 5 and 1 road record. Williams off the inbound pass, knocks down the mid range jumper. And Gonzaga is on the board first, leading it two to nothing. Ashby pulls up at the foul line, poked away by Hollingsworth, and it's a turnover. Zags, quick launch by Williams, in and out on the three-point attempt. Here is Ashby, cut off baseline. Elliott, James. Step back three. Last touch by Gonzaga, so it'll be Tigers basketball. 20 on the shot clock. Tigers are five and four here at the Alex G. Spano Center. That three pointer is long. Ashby wound up on her backside. There's Kaylin Strong. Williams, first year starter. Here's a three ball. And that is a rare miss by Brenda Maxwell. She is an outstanding three point shooter. Outstanding shooter all the way around, shooting 50% from the field, 54 from three, and 98% from the foul line. Minute and a half gone by here in this first quarter. Tigers still looking for their first points. Ashby goes baseline. Throws it away. Here is Williams. Can't finish on the other end, but she follows it up. And she's got the game's first two baskets. Zags lead it four to nothing. Quick three. Ejim with the rebound for Gonzaga. Kaylin Trong, a senior out of Houston. She has his twin sister on the team, Kaylee. She played just a handful of games before suffering a foot injury. And knocking down the three is Kaylin Trong. She shoots it well from behind the arc, 38%. It's also a very good three-point shooting team. 41%, which is first in the country, second in the nation. And the Zags have the first seven points and another turnover by the Tigers. They're third here in the first quarter. Strong picks up her dribble. Hollingsworth's going to launch a three. Ennis tracks down the rebound. Ennis making her first, fifth straight start. The junior out of Burlingame attended St. Ignatius High School in San Francisco. James. Ashby. And now the Tigers can't get one to fall. Scoreless through the first three minutes here in this first quarter. Strong into the front court. 
Here's Williams inside to Ejim. Team's leading score. Bulls her way in. Cleans it up, lays it up. She's got her first two points. Gonzaga's got the first nine points of the game. And head coach Bradley Davis is going to call his first time out. As the Tigers have gotten off to a slow start trailing here, nine to nothing. 3.13 gone by here in this first quarter. This is the first game of a four-game homestand for the Tigers. They'll be back in action here on Saturday against Portland. That is a 2 p.m. start. And then next Thursday here against San Diego, that's another 6 p.m. start. And then they'll conclude the homestand hosting BYU. That is a 2 p.m. start. Tigers 0 for 4 from the field to begin this one. All four shots from beyond the arc. Uh, also turned it over three times. Meanwhile, Gonzaga 4 for 9. They are 1 for 4 behind the arc. There's a good look at the students here in attendance. I mentioned it is Education Day. This has been a long standing tradition here at Pacific. They had to take a break during COVID. But it is back in full swing, and it is a good crowd on hand, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 1,500, 1,600 students. Good chance for them to take in a ball game, tour the campus. So following the timeout, head coach Bradley Davis is going to go to his bench. Rosie Schweitzer, the Richard Jr. out of Australia. She wears number four. She will check in. Katie Deaton has also come on. She's a junior from Wisconsin. She wears number one. No changes for Gonzaga. Schweitzer. She had 18 in her last game against Santa Clara. Loose ball out of bounds. It'll go back over to Pacific. So the Tigers continue to struggle from the field now. 0 for 5 to begin this one. And Zaga has won 12 in a row against the Tigers. They swept the season series a year ago, winning each one by 41 points. Strong trying to get it inside to Ejim off her hands, but she recovers. Maxwell inside. Misses the bunny. Now reset the shot clock. Song is a first year starter last year. And knocking down the three is Williams, and she has gotten off to a quick start. She has seven. Uh, the Gonzaga 12 points. Second three pointer of the first quarter for the Bulldogs. Already have a double-digit lead. Nearly halfway through this first quarter. Tigers still searching for their first two points. Here is James now beyond the three-point arc. Anish tracks it down. Shot clock inside of five. Liz Smith launches a three and she knocks it down. Tigers on the board halfway through here in this first quarter. And they trail it by nine. Williams guarded by James, picks up her dribble. Here's Chong with the shot clock down to five. Hollinsworth with two. She is tied up momentarily in a turnover. Good defense that time for the Tigers. James quickly into the front court, into the lane. Kicks it out, Schweitzer for three. And it rolls around and in, so. Rosie Schweitzer immediately off the bench, pays dividends. That is just her second three-pointer of the season. She had only attempted four coming in. That's going to be an offensive foul on Ejim. And the turnover committed by Gonzaga. First personal on Yvonne Ejim, the junior. Former sixth woman of the year last year in the conference. She's moved into the starting role and an effective one at that. The team's leading scorer. Now 
whistle. I don't think they perhaps started the clock on time or started it too soon. Cecilia Holmberg, number 11, a junior out of Sweden, has now checked in for the Tigers. Coach Bradley Davis going deep into his bench here in this opening quarter. Gonzaga jumped out to a 12-0 lead. Tigers have scored the last five points here in this quarter. Smith drives. Left hand layup. Pretty move. Smith now with five. Nearly is equal their total from the last game against Santa Clara where she scored just six points. Allie Stokes has come on for Gonzaga. She wears number 10. She is a redshirt freshman from Southern California, Redondo Beach. We've got a foul on the floor. That'll be on Liz Elliott. That'll be her first personal. First team foul on the Tigers. Tigers will inbound underneath their own basket. 20 on the shot clock. Trying to get it inside to Egypt. I think from behind, they're going to whistle. Katie Deaton for her first personal, that is. That's her first personal, however, the second team foul, it is a shooting foul. And Yvonne Ejim, junior out of Calgary, Alberta, will step to the line to shoot two. 77% free throw shooter. Jim gets a pair. And the second one barely wrinkled the net. She now has four points. 14-7 Gonzaga lead. Kayla Williams called for her second personal. Second team foul on Gonzaga. They lead it 14-7. Deaton, off the glass, her first two, Katie Deaton. And a valuable sub off the bench for head coach Bradley Davis this season. Hamilton just over 19 points a game. Bounced around a little bit, she was freshman year, she played at Northern Colorado in her sophomore and junior, she was at North Dakota State, but she has found a home here in Stockton playing for the Tigers. Civic trailing by five, trying to get it inside to Egypt, there's contact. Holmberg picks up her first personal. 13 foul, it's a non-shooting foul. Peyton Mumaw, number three, redshirt freshman out of Colorado. She checks in for Gonzaga. Hollinsworth off the mark. Gonzaga, work on the offensive glass. Got at the basket to Stokes. That is just a careless turnover by the Tigers right there, trailing by seven, 240 to play here in the first quarter. Here is Ashby into the front court. Someone from Australia will pull it back, wait for a little help. Three ball on the way, and it drops. Boy, the rim is kind for Cecilia Holmberg, who knocks down the three. Holmberg just a 23% three-point shooter. And the Tigers have cut the deficit now to four. It was once 12. Maxwell inside, can't get it to go, and she is off to a very slow start. And then in the backcourt, Callie Stokes commits a careless foul. That's her first personal fourth team foul. Now James will check back in. She will replace Liz Smith, who will exit with five points. So 
Texas. Sydney Ward now will come on for the first time for Pacific. Ward, number 10, a freshman out of Houston, Texas. Will replace Liz Elliott. Stokes will pick up James Fullcourt. Ashby turns it over. She picked up her dribble and found herself in no man's land. And then it appeared Maxwell stepped out of bounds. So it'll go back over to the Tigers. We'll reset the shot clock to 30. A minute 47 left here in the first quarter. Tags at one point led by 12. And it's just a four point game right now. Here is Ward. Ashby. Quiet first quarter for her. Tries to split the defense. James, a long three. Yes, nothing but the bottom of the net. Her first points. It's just a one-point game with a minute 20 to play here in the first quarter. 4-3 here in the first quarter for the Tigers. Strong, thought about a three, drives, cut off, throws up a wild shot. And it's going to be a blocking foul against Holmberg. That'll be her second personal. And quickly ready to check back in for the Tigers. There's Liz Elliott. She will replace Holmberg. Kaylin Tron will step to the line. Very good free throw shooter. 84% on the season. Only Bulldog to start every game so far this season. Drops home the first free throw. And gets them both. Tag now lead it by three. They are now four for four as a team from the foul line. Here's James inside. Banks it home for two. James back to back baskets. Just a one point game. Collinsworth. Maxwell. Inside, nice backdoor layup. And that is Eliza Hollingworth, the junior in the scoring column now. Not a six second differential from the shot clock to the game clock. Elliott inside, double teamed. A lot of contact, she loses it out of bounds. It'll be a turnover and it'll go back over to Gonzaga. Zags could hold for the final shot. Chase Chevrolet has been winning California business. Since 1944. They lead it by three. Step in from Trong. Back iron, no. Follows up her own miss. E. Jim inside. Several opportunities. We've got a jump ball as the horn sounds. I think they're going to put some time back on the clock. Dominique Hunter, one of our referees, is motioning. Both benches stay back. Let's see how much. 0.8 seconds. And 10 minutes are in the books. And it's the visitors from Spokane leading the Tigers. We'll be back after this message. Chase Chevrolet has been winning California business since 1944. <laughs> 
get a little Stocktonian in you. I'm Steve. And I'm Jamie. And we're owners of Smitty's Wings and Things here in Stockton. As a former pro football player, Steve Smith knows about winning. Football and business is about teamwork. When they needed a new Tahoe for their business, a winning drive from the team at J Chevrolet was just a few clicks away. And then delivered our car the next day. So it was very easy. I would do it again. There's no competition. J Chevrolet. Buy into it. Welcome to University of the Pacific. I'm Dr. Jeff Levine, Dean of Undergraduate Admission. People ask me all the time, hey Jeff, why University of the Pacific? Really, there's five main reasons. We're a big university with choices and small college caring. We have student-driven research for real and lasting change. We have real-life learning outside of the classroom through internships and co-ops. Welcome back to Stockton. We start the second quarter. Gonzaga basketball. They lead it by a score of 20 to 17. Kayla Williams led the way for the Zags with seven points in that first quarter. Hollinsworth with the offensive rebound. Maxwell's pass is deflected. Trong. Maxwell. And she is in the scoring column. Anna Maxwell, the graduate transfer from University of Utah. She gives the Bulldogs a six-point lead here with 30 seconds gone by in the first quarter. James and Smith led the way for UOP in that first quarter. Five points apiece. The difference in that first 10 minutes, Gonzaga on the offensive glass. A 10-4 advantage on the boards. And six offensive rebounds. Let's see if the Tigers can clean that up here in the second quarter. Strong into the lane, left-hand layup won't go. She ends up on her, the floor, but she'll go to the line to shoot two. First foul on Maddie Ennis, first team foul. Kaylin Strong will step to the line. Two for two from the charity stripe here in the first half. One rolls over the front rim. Ron comes in averaging just under 16 points a game. She is the team's second leading scorer. And she's now a perfect four for four from the line. And Gonzaga has the first five points here in the second quarter to extend their lead to eight. Ennis, Smith. Not partially blocked, but she has fouled, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. Eliza Hollingsworth, Junior, picks up her first personal. And Liz Smith will go to the line for the first time here this morning. They can still say this morning, 11.25 a.m. Pacific. First free throw attempt of the game for the Tigers, and Smith... Drops home the first one. She's an 84% free throw shooter. She gets them both, and uh, she leads the Tigers with seven points here in this first half. And the press pays off with a turnover. E. Jim pass one out of bounds. Turnover back to the Tigers. Elliott, James. Adi's all over the deck in the lane. A whistle stops play. And Hollingsworth, she picks up her second foul here in the quarter. And Coach Lisa Fortier is going to go to her bench. And for the first time here this morning, we'll see Esther Little, sophomore out of England. number zero. She's coming off a strong game. She had a career high 12 against Portland. Prior to that, she had scored just 14 points the entire season, so she nearly matched that total. Smith. She was looking for a foul. Shot goes out of bounds. 
Back over now to Gonzaga. Leading by six. And the Tigers will pick up full court man. EGM picks up her dribble. Perhaps a little bit too aggressive on the defensive side of the ball is Katie Deaton. That's her second personal. Second team foul here against the Tigers in the second quarter. Now Sam Ashby will quickly check in. She will replace Deaton. Williams double team, gets it inside to e Jim. Strong baseline, had it knocked away, went right back to her. Inside to e Jim now. Spot up jumper, won't go. James with the rebound. Into the front court, Ashby, quick three, yes. Count it, Sam Ashby. That is her first points of the game. Just a one possession game. Ashby a 33% shooter from beyond the arc. Williams with the screen from Little. Williams into the lane. Williams lays it in. First two points here in the second. She leads all Bulldog scores with nine. The lead is five. Inside to Elliott. Ennis in the lane. Nice move, Maddie Ennis. Her first two points. Once again, a one possession game. B. Jim. Soft touch. Junior has two in the quarter, six in the half. Bulldog lead back to five. Elliott inside, double team, nice pass to Ennis, lays it up and in. So Maddie Ennis with back-to-back -back baskets. She now has equaled her season average of four points. Tigers trail up by three, timeout on the floor. We'll step aside, you're watching Pacific Tigers basketball on the West Coast Conference Network. Chase Chevrolet has been winning California business since 1944. <laughs> Get a little Stocktonian in you. I'm Steve. And I'm Jamie. And we're owners of Smitty's Wings of Things here in Stockton. As a former pro football player, Steve Smith knows about winning. Football and business is about teamwork. When they needed a new Tahoe for their business, a winning drive from the team at Chase Chevrolet was just a few clicks away. And then delivered our car the next day. So it was very easy. I would do it again. There's no competition. Chase Chevrolet. Buy into it. Welcome back to the Alex G. Spano Center. We've got a good one cooking here between Gonzaga and Pacific. Tigers got off to a very slow start. Only went the first five minutes of the game without scoring, but they have certainly heated up, shooting nearly 59% from the field. Now we've got a tie up in the lane. Possession arrow points to the Tigers. Destiny Burton will return to the floor for head coach. It's the 48. Tigers with an opportunity to tie it, perhaps cut the lead to one. Schweitzer drives, goes glass, banks it home. Her first points here in the second. She's got five overall, and it's just a one-point game. And Zaga scored the first 12 points of this contest. E. Jim. Williams for three. Long rebound comes out to James. It's a two on two. James. Smith. Ashby. Schweitzer. Now back 
to James. So plenty of time on the shot clock. Tigers up an opportunity to take their first lead of the game. Smith goes baseline, a lot of contact, no whistle. Last touch by Gonzaga, they'll reset the shot clock to 20. Sydney Ward will come on, she will replace Maddie Ennis who exits with four points. James looking for someone to get it into. It is Ward. Williams. Strong. Here is Stokes now. Pass deflected. Williams with nine on the shot clock. EJM can't get the follow. She gets that one to go and she'll go to the line. Looking to convert the old fashioned three point play. Ennis, uh, along with Elliott, will quickly check back in. They will replace Ward and Schweitzer. Thanks, perfect six for six from the line here in the first half. I don't know if I just jinxed him, but Williams tracks down the loose ball. Also stops play. Tyler Trimble is going to adjust into the shot clock or the game clock, and it looks like the shot clock, so it'll be 20. And the game clock will read 413. Inside to E-Jim, lays it up and in. Boy, that was an absolutely beautiful feed from Burton. And E-Jim is our first player in double figures. She now has 10. And James is going to be whistled for a travel. It'll be a turnover, and it'll go back over to Gonzaga. 3.49 to play here in this first half. Diamond Richardson will check back in for the first time. Richardson wears number five. She's from nearby Sacramento. She's a sophomore. Move off. Williams. B. Jim. Cross court pass now. Stokes. going to be a shot clock violation. Outstanding defense from Pacific. And I'll go back over the Tigers with 319 remaining here in the first half. Ennis. Ashby. James will pull up for three and thank it in. I don't know if she called glass. Second three of the game. She now has eight. Tigers draw to within two. Stokes answers on the other end. It's a two-pointer. First basket here in the second quarter. She's got four in the half. And it's a four-point lead. Looking to try to get it inside to Elliott. It's poked away. Head coach Bradley Davis screaming for a foul inside. Won't get it. Here's Williams now on the front court for Gonzaga. Muma. There's Stokes. Williams with 10 on the shot clock. Gets the screen from Ejim. Pulls up for the three-pointer and knocks it down. Five in the quarter, 12 in the game. The lead all scores is Williams. The lead is seven with two minutes to play here in the first half. And a whistle as... Tigers come into the front court. 
believe they're going to whistle Destiny Burton for a foul down low. That is her first personal team, third team foul. Esther Little will come back in for Gonzaga. Pacific will inbound underneath their own basket. Two minutes to play here in the second quarter. Sangs have outscored the Tigers here in the second, 18-14. And Coach Bradley Davis looking for some kind of explanation from referee Tyler Trimble. Richardson, baseline jumper won't go. The long rebound comes out of the hands of Kaylin Trong. Guarded by James, gets the screen. Strong. Screen from Little. Picks up her dribble. Williams with four on the shot clock. She just has to heave one up. And that is a backbreaker. You play great defense. Williams throws up a prayer and it gets answered. Third three of the half. And the lead is back to double figures for Gonzaga. Richardson just bowls her way into the lane. She's going to be whistled for an offensive foul. That was an easy call. Her first personal. Kaylin <laughs> Trong remains down for Gonzaga. I don't know if she's just trying to fix her ponytail. And she's helped up by her teammates. 69 seconds to play here in this first half. It now throws it away. Good defense by Pacific, forcing the turnover. Inside of a minute to play here. Coming up at halftime, we're going to have an interview with Janet Godina Perez. She's the principal at Morada Middle School in Lodi. She's a former Pacific player. And she has brought several of her schools to this education day over the years. Maxwell lays it in. She now has five. Nice dish from Trunk. And the lead is back to 12, the largest of the game for Gonzaga. James, back iron. Williams, quick lead in the front court. Trong, oh, that is a nice pass, lays it up. And no that's going to be a travel. That was a nice touch pass. From Kaylin Trong. And it's waved off because of the travel. So now Pacific can hold for the final shot, trailing by 12. James double teamed and throws it away. Trong up ahead to Williams, and she'll lay it in with just under five seconds to go. That'll count if it goes. We have played 20 minutes here in Stockton, and the visitor is Gonzaga at the halftime locker room, leading it by 14. Don't go anywhere. We'll have a halftime interview coming up shortly with Janet Godina Perez. We offer concentrations in civil engineering, uh, mechanical engineering, engineering management, electrical and computer engineering, and computer science. Normally, we have engineering students and computer science students who will apply for the Master of Science and Engineering Science program. However, we offer pathways for people who have no background in, in engineering and are looking to find their identity within engineering. A lot of our students who are in the master's program will be attending school and also working where they had prior work experience. And so they're able to balance their job as well as the curriculum. Because we offer engineering concentrations in so many fields and in computer science, we have students who, who go work in city governments or in public agencies, or work in private companies in Silicon Valley, or really, you know, choose their own adventure. 
I was just wonderfully surprised to see the amazing female faculty here at, at Pacific, and specifically in computer science. And it really encouraged me to continue my passion. Pacific is a university of purpose. We have this environment that helps foster this growth. We truly believe that gaining expert knowledge is a foundation and a core value for anyone who wants to pursue a, a field in engineering, computer science, or even beyond that. I would say you would find a community, a family, and a transformative experience. You meet so many students, you learn about their background and their diversity, and you also learn about your passion within the classroom and even outside of the classroom. In terms of flexibility, the curriculum that you want is designed by you and a faculty member. You're gonna be working with the faculty, whether it's in the classroom or planning your, your whole curriculum, really receiving a student-centered experience. You can come in as a student and go, I wanna do game development. I wanna jump in virtual reality, and that's just so wonderful to me. And I love, you know, not only the diversity of the opportunities at Pacific, but also my fellow students. If it's at Pacific, I can do it. Hey, Michael, it's Dennis. I've got Janet. Welcome back to Stockton, where at halftime, where Gonzaga leads Pacific by a score of 45 to 31. Halftime festivities continue. Dennis Ackerman, pleased to be joined by Janet Godina Perez. You are now the principal at Morada Middle School, which is in Lodi. You're also a former player here. When you retired, you were the leading scorer, and now you're the second all-time <laughs> leading scorer. <laughs> second time, the gal that came behind me, Julie Zukowski, just an incredible player. Um, just, she was such a great person to watch, and it was just, she, she dominated at that time. It was really great. She came after me. I got a chance to coach her for one year also. Um, just, just, it really was a time to be able to see some women in basketball and how they were doing. Well, it's education day here, and this is such a wonderful event. How, how would you describe it? It is great. We've been coming here now uh, pre-COVID, and so I would say this is, I think, close to about our eighth year. And it's been really great for our students. We are part of Lodi Unified, but our students come from Stockton. Uh, with the campus as close as it is, I would say that probably 99% of our students have never even been on the campus at UOP. So we really try to make sure the students have the opportunity to come out, uh, tour the campus, be a part of the game, and see what's going on. Uh, women's sports is something that students sometimes don't have the opportunity to see and it's come so far along that it's great to be able to see kids come out here and just the atmosphere for the women to be able to play. Um, I know when I was playing, if I had had a crowd like this, it would have been great to play in front of and really motivate. You were a former player, now bringing these kids back. What does this mean for you? Like I said, it's wonderful to be able to come back in here and see the experience, see the smile, the kids' faces. Um, they were super excited. Uh, we offered 100 kids to come, and every 100 of those kids got their permission slip back in a day or two. They were super excited to be able to come to it. Uh, just watching them during the game, they got their phones out, they're recording it. Uh, they're, they're loving being a part of this, and I'm just thankful that UOP continues to provide this. All right, I'm going to take you back as a player. Gonzaga is down 14. What would you like to see out of them here in the second half to uh, see if they can be a little bit more competitive here against the Zags? Um, kind of what we were watching is that uh, definitely Gonzaga's getting them on the offensive rebound. Uh, so I think that they're just going to have to do a little better job of putting some pressure and boxing out and getting those loose balls. I think that's been the, kind of the difference of the game is that. And then just right at the end, some turnovers that changed the game. I mean, it was a close game that last two minutes, and all of a sudden a couple turnovers and baskets at, you know, the time clock going off, and there you go. It's a difference. All right. You retired as the leading scorer, the second leading scorer. When was the last time you picked up a basketball and you still got some game? Um, every now and then I'll go out with the kids and shoot on the court. They're kind of surprised because, again, they don't expect a woman to be able to shoot a basketball. Um, so it's nice. In my younger days when I was teaching PE, I'd get out there with them. And I think in the 16 years I taught PE, I only had one student beat me. So that was a pretty good record. <laughs> Janet Godina Perez, thanks so much for your time and dropping by and joining us at halftime. Thank you very much. Don't go anywhere, second half action coming your way. Tigers trailing it by 14 here in Stockton.
Hi, I'm Samantha and I'm a graduate student at the University of the Pacific. Today, I want to give you a campus tour of U of P. Let's go! First, we have DeRosa University Center. The UC is a great place to grab a bite to eat, study, or hang out with friends. You can also buy all of your U of P gear at the bookstore right next to the UC. There is a big lawn in front of the UC, perfect for tanning, playing frisbee, or bringing your dog out for a walk. The Bond Student Fitness Center has everything you need to work out, including a rock tower, student personal trainers, and a Tiger X Group fitness program. Now let's check out our athletic facilities. This is the Alex G. Spano Center, where we host our basketball games. I would show you inside, but the doors are locked, so let's move on to the rest of our athletic facilities. Overall, the University of the Pacific is a gorgeous campus. There are many places to walk around, take pictures, or relax with friends. If you ever get the chance, grab a breakfast burrito from this Hey, Michael, it's Dennis. If you want to come back at 2, I'm...
Welcome back to the Alex G. Spano Center. Halftime festivities winding down. Tigers trailing it by 14 points. Let's take a look at some first half numbers. First for Gonzaga, they had a couple players in double figures led by Michaela Williams. She had 17 points. That is her season high. Yvonne Ejim was the only other player in double figures. She had 10. Kaylin Trong had seven. It was Callie Stokes with four. Maxwell had five. The Tigers did a good job of keeping her in check there in that first half. Eliza Hollingsworth pitched in with two. As for Pacific, they didn't have anybody in double figures. Anaya James led the way with eight. Liz Smith had seven. It was four points apiece for Schweizer off the bench. And Madeline Ennis, Sam Ashby had just three points. They need to get her going in the second half. She came in averaging nearly 16 points a game in these last five contests. Katie Deaton had two points off the bench. Cecilia Holm were pitched in with three points. Both teams shot it very well in that first half. Gonzaga 51.5%. Meanwhile, Pacific an even 50%. Both teams also shot it well beyond the arc. Gonzaga five for nine. Meanwhile, Pacific five for 11. Second half underway. Here is Ejim. Maxwell for three, in and out. Said earlier, the Tigers did a very good job on her in the first half. Here's Williams inside. And she continues to have a career game. First points here in the second half. It's the largest lead now at 16 for Gonzaga. Williams now leads all scorers with 19. Ashby thought about a three, gets the screen from Ennis. And Ennis is gonna be whistled for an offensive foul, a moving screen, her second personal. Nobody in foul trouble on either side. Williams, out to Trong. Shot clock inside 10. Throws up a wild shot, doesn't draw any glass. Doesn't draw any iron, I beg your pardon. Ashby into the front court quickly. Over to Smith. James will reset the shot clock at 20. Inside to Elliott. She is rejected inside by Williams. Donald comes up with the block. Able to keep it in play. Ejim inside. Pretty move, can't finish. But once again, Gonzaga working the offensive glass. They had a plus 13 advantage in the rebound column. They had 10 offensive rebounds in that first half, and they'll add a few more on that previous possession. Elliott will take a quick seat on the bench. She will release by Rosie Schweitzer, who had four points in that first half for Pacific. Smith got caught up in no man's land, ended up traveling in a very quick timeout called by head coach Bradley Davis. We'll keep it right here, 8.14 to play in this third quarter. Pacific trailing it by 16. Gonzaga has won 12 in a row over the Tigers. Tigers' last win against Gonzaga was New Year's Eve 2016. Pacific also a young team. Last year they were the youngest team in the conference. This year the second youngest team. If you're just joining us, this is the first of a four-game homestand. It continues Saturday, and the Tigers host Portland Pilots, Portland currently in second place in the conference with a six and one record. Then next Thursday, uh, welcome San Diego. That is a 6 p.m. start and it'll finish out the homestand against BYU. Gonzaga is in the middle of a three game trip. They started out with a victory at Portland which gave them sole possession of first place. here today uh, against Pacific. And then they will wrap things up at St. Mary's on Saturday. That is a 2 p.m. start. The Zags are the 
measuring stick of this conference, 17 West Coast Conference titles, nine conference tourney titles. They have made 12 NCAA appearances. Zaga dumped out to a quick 12-0 lead. Tigers cut it to a one possession game and then Gonzaga went on a run right at the end of that first half. Got the lead to 14. And have scored the only two points here in this third quarter and the lead is 16. That is where we stand. Andrew Williams. Inside to Egypt, working against Dennis. Boy, she just lowers the shoulder, creates a little space, but can't finish. James guarded by Williams, gets the screen from Schweitzer, kicks it out to Ennis. 12 on the shot clock. James, pull up in the lane. Ennis, nice job on the offensive glass. Tigers will reset. Nash be a very quiet first half, just three points. Nice move. Coach Bradley Davis wanted a foul. Three minutes gone by here in the third quarter. Neither team exactly lighting it up offensively. Combined for just two points. That'll be an over the back. Loose ball foul whistled against Eliza Hollingsworth, her third personal. Williams will exit for Gonzaga. Cecilia Holmberg. She will come in, replacing Ennis. Holmberg had three points in that first half. Callie Stokes comes on to replace Williams for Gonzaga. James, turnaround jumper. Front iron, Schweitzer offensive rebound, lays it back in. First points here in this third quarter. Took the Tigers nearly three and a half minutes, so a slow start in the first, another slow start here in the third. That was last touch by Ashby. It'll remain Gonzaga basketball. Schweitzer now with six in the game. Katie Deaton will check in. She'll replace James. Deaton had two points in that first half. Strong gets the screen from Hollinsworth. There's Maxwell. Jim Stokes. Hollingsworth launches a three. Corner three won't go by Ashby. Schweitzer with a strong offensive rebound. Goes on the deck with Trong, and I believe they're going to say Trong kicked the ball, so it'll remain Tigers' possession. Destiny Burton will come on. She will replace E. Jim. Burton, the junior out of Wichita, Kansas. It's a transfer from Panola College. A lot of contact underneath. Katie Deaton's going to be whistled for her offensive foul. That's her third personal. She's the first Tiger player to pick up three personal fouls. Burton, deflected by Deaton. She's able to track it down. Nice pass to Smith, who lays it up and in. And the full court pressure pays off once again. That's two points, first two points here in the second half. She now has nine to lead all Tigers scores. The deficit is 12. Well, if you're Pacific, you just want to get it down to single digits heading into the fourth quarter and then take your chances from there. Stokes. Pulls up. Winds up in the hands of Maxwell. Here is Stokes. Now Trong will reset for Gonzaga. Schweitzer called for her first personal. Well, Liz Elliott will come back in. She'll replace Schweitzer. Had some effective minutes here in this third quarter for head coach Bradley Davis. Set the shot clock at 20. Just over five minutes to play here in the third. Trong's going to pull up. 
Strong rebound by Liz Smith. Goes behind the back. Guarded closely there by Stokes. A little bit too close. Stokes, that's her second personal. That's her freshman out of Redondo. We've got a timeout on the floor. Tigers, they've cut the deficit to 12. We'll be back after this message. You're watching Pacific Tigers basketball on the West Coast Conference Network. Following the timeout, it'll be Tigers basketball. They're just over halfway through this third quarter. The two teams have combined for just six points. Gonzaga has two Pacific four. We're introducing a lot of these schools here on Education Days. About 1,600 students from across the Stockton area. Smith trying to go baseline. Cut off by Muma, but she has whistled for the foul, her first personal. Third team foul on Gonzaga. Tigers with an opportunity to cut the deficit to single digits. Boy, both teams have really cooled off from the field. Gonzaga shooting just under 42% now. Here is Ashby. No, oh, that brought the bench up. She couldn't get the three to go. Going to his check back in now for the Zags. Burton, double teamed. And away from the ball, we've got a whistle. It's going to be an offensive foul against Gonzaga. E. Jim whistle for the offensive foul, her second personal. So once again with the Tigers, with an opportunity to cut it to single digits. can't finish. Elliott can, however. Liz Elliott, her first two. There's somebody averages nine points a game. They need to get going offensively. It is down to a 10-point lead. Tigers defense has been impressive here in the third quarter. Williams looks like she was tripped. Liz Smith is whistled for the personal. Maxwell, along with Hollingsworth, will check back in for Gonzaga. Trying to get it inside to Ejim. Muma picks up her dribble. Good defense by Ashby. Williams. Kind of a ticky-tack call against Cecilia Holmberg. That's going to be her third personal. So her and Katie Deaton now have three personal fouls. That is the fifth team foul against Pacific here in the third quarter. So that will send Don Ejim to the line for two. She is two for three from the line. Now she is three for four. That's her first points here. In the second half, she now has 11. So 
she gets a pair. AGM now with 12 points. AGM is the reigning West Coast Conference sixth woman of the year, and she was also second all-team a year ago in the West Coast Conference. Tigers do a nice job breaking the press. Deaton is double teamed. Brenna Maxwell, graduate student, picks up her first personal. Third team foul against Gonzaga. Beg your pardon. Fifth team foul. Looking at the timeout, so I beg your pardon. So I'll send the Tigers to the line. Katie Deaton gets the first one. 71% free throw shooter. And gets them both. Tigers a very good free throw shooting team, 80%. Beg your pardon. They're at 75%. Both these two teams shoot very well from the line. Deaton now with four. Back to a 10-point game. Jim calling for it at the elbow. Working against Ashby, and that's pretty much a mismatch. And E. Jim with the finish. She has four of the six points for Gonzaga here in this third quarter. They lead it 51-39, just under three minutes to play. Ashby in the lane. Like that might have been partially blocked. Boy, that is a nice move by Elliott. She picked up the ball out of midair. Reverse layup. Got a pair of baskets here in the third. All four of her points coming here in this third quarter. Maxwell, step back jumper. Knocks it down. She now has seven. Maxwell is the reigning West Coast Conference Player of the Week. For the most part, the Tigers have done a good job keeping her in check. Elliott inside, but it looked like she was grabbed on the arm. Referee said it was all ball. Nice pass. Elliott will finish. That is a good dish from Katie Deaton. Elliott was six of the ten Tiger points, nearly a steal. Meanwhile, we'll set things up with 17 on the shot clock for Gonzaga. Here is Williams. At 15 in that first half, just two here in the third quarter. Hollingsworth throws it up, draws the foul. Maddie Ennis, her third personal. So Ennis, Deaton, and Holmberg all with three fouls apiece. So I just said that Williams had 15 in that first half. She had 17 in that first half, just two so far here in the third quarter. So the Tigers have done some nice halftime adjustments holding her in check in this third quarter. I'll send Hollingsworth to the line. She has just two points. Very good free throw shooter, 79%. That's them both. Zaga now 10 for 11 from the charity strike. Erica Adams, number 20, has checked in now for Pacific. Junior out of Oakland. She wears number 20. Elliott left wide, open and lays it in. She has eight all coming here in the third quarter. 70 seconds to play here in the third. Tigers trying to get it to single digits. Elliott tried to overplay. Ejim takes advantage and lays it in. She now has 16, which is right at her average. Ashby, this is screen from Elliott, doesn't lose, doesn't use it, has to go track it down. Picked up her dribble, still plenty of time on the shot clock. Smith launches a three and buries it. Smith's second three of the game. 
Five in the quarter, 12 overall. Maxwell tries the answer at the other end, perhaps rushed it. And the Tigers quickly push. The shot clock is off. Ashby. And the long rebound. Ashby can't track it down. And you wonder if she perhaps should have played for the final shot here in the third quarter, but she was feeling it. So Gonzaga will have the final shot here in the third. 18.8 .8 seconds to go. Shot clock turned off. Zags leading it by nine. Inside 10. Williams with seven. And a whistle will stop the clock. And it's going to be a foul whistled against Pacific. It's the first on Ashby. And with 3.5 seconds left here in the third, Brenna Maxwell will step to the line to see somebody you don't want to foul. A 98% free throw shooter. She's missed one free throw the entire season. That is now 40 in a row made by her. Make it 41. She now has nine. Lead back to double digits. Ashby, it will not count. At the end of three, Gonzaga leading Pacific by a score of 59 to 48. We're going to keep it right here. And then Tiger fans, come join PAF to make a direct and lasting impact on the future of our student athletes at Pacific and beyond. Support our teams and elevate the competitiveness of Pacific Athletics through the Impact Fund and receive exclusive PAF benefits and access to PAF events. For more information, join PAF.org. And make sure to follow your Tigers on social media at T Pacific Tigers through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts to get the inside scoop on what's new in Tiger Athletics. We want you to ring in the new year with Pacific Athletics Store, a new monthly offer with 20% off all your performance wear through January the 31st. Visit PacificTigers.com to get your order in today. One more promo for you. Download the Pacific Tigers app to be able to follow all your Pacific Athletics on the go. The Pacific Athletics app is free through the App Store and is available on all iPhone and Android devices. Tigers outscored Pacific there in that third quarter by a score of 17 to 14. Took both offenses about halfway to get going in that third quarter. The fans liking what they're saying from the Tigers, doing a little dance moves here in between the quarters. Kayla Williams continues to lead the way for Gonzaga. She has a game high 19. Yvonne Ejim, one of the player double figures for Gonzaga. She has 16. Meanwhile, for Pacific, Liz Smith leading the way with 12 points. As I mentioned, both teams kind of cooled off from the field. Gonzaga now shooting at 45% overall. And meanwhile, Pacific at 49%. We are underway here in the fourth quarter. Tigers trailing it. And that is a great way to start the quarter. As Liz Smith knocks down the three. Eight and a half, 15 overall. It's her third three-pointer. And the lead is eight. Nice back door, lays it up and in. Stokes. Tigers will answer right back. Trong. Maxwell. Take your part in that's Hollingsworth. Bradley Davis screaming for a three-second violation, and I think he has every right to be. Liz Elliott picks up her second personal. So James, along with Ennis, will come back in. Ward and Ashby will exit. Hollingsworth, two for two from the line. Now she is three for three. Is like an outstanding free throw shooting team. First in the conference, second in the nation. In and out. That's the jinx worked. 
Nine point lead for the Zags, could be six and it is. Liz Smith, back to back three pointers. And it's just a two possession game now. Little, she traveled. After the turnover, it'll be the Tigers basketball. Tigers have outscored Gonzaga 8-3 here to begin this fourth quarter. Just over 90 seconds gone. Dennis. Smith. Oh, she's got the hot hand right now. That's her third three in the quarter. It's just a one possession game with eight minutes to play. Smith has nine of the 11 for Pacific here in the fourth. Five threes for the game. Hollingsworth answers with a three of her own. After Hollingsworth knocks down the three. Timeout Gonzaga, they lead it by six. They step away momentarily from Stockton. Hello everyone, my name is Isla Shaw. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm currently a sophomore at the University of the Pacific, majoring in business administration. And welcome to Grace Cavell Hall. With over 175 rooms, Grace Cavell Hall is the biggest residential hall on Pacific's campus. Living on campus is one big part of what makes Pacific feel like home. It helps you fit into the campus community right away. The rooms start as a blank canvas, but once you bring your belongings, your bedding, your art, it is an amazing opportunity for you to show your personality. Quick tip, I recommend you bring a refrigerator so you can have your snacks on hand. Welcome back to the Alex G. Spano Center where Liz Smith has had the hot hand here in the fourth quarter. She has knocked down three threes. She now has a game high 21 and she has brought the Tigers to within six. On the timeout, it is Tigers basketball. James, there is Smith guarded by Williams. And this will swing it across court now to Deaton. There's only the two points for the Tigers here in the fourth. Smith again. Too strong. Elliott on the putback. She's in double figures. The deficit is just four. And Smith searching for a 4 3. And Elliott with a strong offensive rebound. It's the seventh offensive rebound for Pacific. Hollingsworth, who just knocked down a three, drops home another one. She had just four points through the first three quarters. She's got seven here in the fourth. She's now in double figures, and it's back to a seven-point lead. Tigers trying to snap a two-game losing streak and a 12-game losing streak overall to these Zags. Trying to get it inside to Elliott. It's tipped away momentarily. She takes a hard spill, but she'll go to the line to shoot two. And that's Hollingsworth. That's her fourth personal. So she will exit with 6.42 to go here in the fourth quarter. And she'll be replaced by Destiny Burton. Elliott, just a 51% free throw shooter. 
First trip to the line here today. And she did not look like a 51% free throw shooter right there. Sophomore Ada Inglewood. One for two. But the rebound comes out to Deaton. Russell stops play. Perhaps they're going to reset the shot clock. So 6.27 on the game clock, eight seconds on the shot clock. James will trigger it in for the Tigers. Trailing it here by six. Smith being guarded very closely by Williams. Smith has had the hot hand here for the Tigers here in this third, fourth quarter, beg your pardon. She has nine over 21 here in the fourth. All nine points coming on three threes. I'm not sure what the holdup is now. I thought we just had to adjust the game clock and the shot clock now. Referee Tyler Trimble is talking to Liz Elliott. I'm not sure what that's all about. Tigers have outscored the Zags 14 to nine here in this fourth quarter, perhaps trying to reset the game clock and the shot clock. So now 6.39 to go here in the fourth. And the shot clock perhaps, well, it says five right now, but I don't know if that is accurate. Still trying to get that figured out. Tigers trail by 14 at the half. 11 coming into this fourth quarter, but they have trimmed the deficit to sixth. In large part because of Liz Smith. Can't finish, there's Elliott again off the offensive blast. And Liz Elliott has made it just a four point game. She has five in the quarter, 13 in the half, 13 in the game. And Elliott has just been the workhorse on the glass here in this second half for the Tigers. Ejim, good defense from Ennis. Well, it looked like Ennis just went straight up. And e Jim's going to get the benefit of the doubt, and she's going to head back to the foul line. Gonzaga, 87% from the line here today. They made 13 out of 15. e Jim is four for five. Calgary, Alberta native, knocks home the first one. She's been a member of the under-19 Canadian national team. One of seven children. It is a five-point lead. It is a six-point lead. Her first two points here in the fourth. She now has 18 points. And she leads, thank your pardon, second leading scorer for Gonzaga. Williams still leading the way with 19. However, just two of those have come here in the second half. Elliott. Inside, double team, doesn't matter, lays it up and in. Elliott now with 15. Her season high is 17. She's done that twice. But once again, looked like a ticky-tack foul whistled against Katie Deaton. That is her fourth personal. Esther Little will come in. She'll replace Destiny Burton. And Sam Ashby is going to check in, likely for Deaton. Deaton will leap. Thanks will down underneath their own basket. Trong. Egypt. Drives, splits the defense, can't finish. And it comes out to Ashby, who runs into her own player. Looked like she collided with Liz Elliott. Elliott tried to hold her up so Ashby wouldn't travel. James working one-on-one -on -one against Maxwell. Nice move and the finish, and she'll go to the line trying to make it a three-point play. Maxwell with the foul, her second personal, and you can see the reaction from James and the entire bench for Gonzaga. James, first two points here in the second half. She's now in double figures and an opportunity to try to cut it to a one-point game. 5.30 to play, and she does indeed. 
Now pick up full court press. Williams picks up her dribble, Ejim. And they're into the front court. Chant of defense from the crowd. It was a good crowd on hand here for this early start. Ejim, oh nice dish underneath, however, Little was unable to finish. Boy, she had a point blank look at it. And for the first time today, Pacific has an opportunity to take the lead. Schweitzer, Ashby. Smith! Well, that would have brought the house down. Tigers with another opportunity now. They continue to do a good job on the offensive glass here in this fourth quarter. Shot clock is down to 10. Schweitzer the screen for Smith. Pull up jumper. In and out heartbreak. And it comes down to Trong. She's into the front court. She's into the lane. Her jumper's front iron, no, but it comes out to Ejim. Pacific can't get set defensively. And Trong makes him pay with the three. Her first points here in the fourth quarter. She's in double figures. The lead is back to four for Gonzaga. This has been a heck of a game between these two teams. And it's back to just a one possession game. Holmberg, her second field goal. Nice job against Little. And a turnover. Opportunity to perhaps tie it or take the lead. E. Jim, they're going to say she pushed Smith out of bounds. That'll be the third personal against E. Jim. Stokes will return. Little will exit for Gonzaga. It's a non-shooting foul. James will take it out. 3.46 to play. Tigers down by two. Smith working against Williams. Gets the screen from Schweitzer. Smith drives, and she is rejected by E. Jim. That's a good defensive play. E. Jim goes 6-1. Will Smith goes 5-9. It'll still be... Tigers basketball, 3.40 to play, 19 on the shot clock. Little housekeeping underneath the basket. That's a nice back door to lay it up and in. They're going to count the basket. Boy, that is a great defense. That is a great play designed by head coach Bradley Davis off the inbound pass. Holmberg, second field goal here in the quarter. We're all knotted up at 73 with 3.39 to play. And now Ashby will go to the line, and she will try to give the Tigers their first lead here. She is a 90% free throw shooter. And it's going to be a timeout now, Gonzaga. We'll keep it right here. Boy, what a fourth quarter this has been for Pacific. They have outscored Gonzaga 25 to 14. It's going to erase an 11 point deficit. Tiger fans, we want to hear about you and how you rep Pacific. Visit PacificTigers.com to participate in our survey and unlock a buy one, get one ticket offer to the men's basketball game against San Francisco February the 16th at 8 p.m. Participants will also be entered for a chance to win four courtside seat tickets to the San Francisco game, so make sure to visit our website today. Hey, about this Saturday, why don't you make it a full day of Tiger Athletics to celebrate Powercats birthday with a double dose of Tigers basketball, beginning with the women taking on Portland at 2 p.m., then enjoy the highly anticipated matchup between the number six ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs at 7 p.m. And arrive early to take part in the Show Your Stripes Tiger Pep Rally hosted by PAF beginning at 5.30 p.m. That will include heavy appetizers, wine, beer, and soft drinks. For more information on how you can RSVP, please visit PacificTigers.com. And let's get one more read in here while we got some time before the timeout is over. Sign up for Pacific Athletics e-newsletter on their website at PacificTigers.com to stay up to date with the upcoming slate of games and promotions. So following the timeout, Sam Ashby will be at the foul line trying to give the Tigers their first lead. Uh, 
So I beg your pardon. So after further review, the basket does not count. So remain Tigers basketball. 3.39 to play. 20 seconds on the shot clock. So perhaps we're going to reset either the game clock or the shot clock. And while we do that, the Junior Tigers Dance Clinic is back, hosted by Pacific's very own Tiger Dancers. will be held Saturday, February the 11th, between 12 and 3. The opportunity to perform at halftime of the women's basketball game at 4 p.m. Back to live action. Here's James. Step back three, a rainbow three. And she has got it. Boy, that is a pretty shot from Anaya James. And she has given the Tigers their first lead here this afternoon. They lead it 74 73. Under three and a half minutes to play. Boy, that one brought rain. She's got six in the quarter, 14 for the game. Williams can't find it. Underneath, E. Jim. And Gonzaga back out on top by a point, just over three minutes to play. And now a turnover committed by the Tigers. Strong into the front court. Maxwell. Williams. Strong for three, straight away, no. E. Jim with a strong offensive rebound, kicks it out to Maxwell. No, nope. well, she has really struggled from the field here today. Once again, another offensive rebound for Gonzaga. And they will reset. Shot clock is now down to 10. Strong, oh, you gotta stop the balls. And she is fouled. Holmberg. Her fourth personal. That will send Trong to the line. Senior is an 84% free throw shooter. Four for four this afternoon. She has 10 points overall. And give her 11. Conley knocks down the first one. She has them both. She now has 12. The lead is back to three. It's still a one possession game for the Tigers. Here's Ashby working against Maxwell. Picks up her dribble, looking for a little bit of help. Bops it over to Smith. James, working there against Strong. And an errant pass knocked away by Hollingsworth. Civic turns it over. Strong, Williams into the lane. Pull up jumper, back iron. A hot first half. She's been ice cold here in the second half. But it remains Gonzaga basketball, just over two minutes to play. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Trying to get it inside to Ejim. They do, and she lays it up and in. She now has 22. Inside to Elliott, she is fouled. And that is four personals now on Yvonne Ejim. So Elliott will go to the line, one for two. Not a particularly good free throw shooter. This is the first of two. In and out, she misses them both. Those are two huge misses right there. And Zaga leading it by five with the ball. Tigers need a big defensive stand right here. Trong all the way, lays it up. It rolls off the iron. And Ashby comes up with it up ahead. She had Elliott and never saw her. Here's James. James off glass, yes. Nice patience by James. You didn't necessarily need a three there. It's still a one possession game. And the Tigers come up with another big defensive stand right here. 70 seconds to play in this one. Shot clock at 17. Trong. Maxwell, here is Williams. 
Inside to Egypt, momentarily poked away. Ashby goes to the floor. It's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow, however, is pointing to Gonzaga, so they will retain possession. Holmberg is going to check in for head coach Bradley Davis, who's going to exit. Elliott will go back to the bench. Just five to shoot for Gonzaga. E. Jim, four, reverse layup, no. Ennis taps it over to Ashby. No timeout, 50 seconds to play. Here is James. Once again, each team has two timeouts. Shot clock at 20. James, all the way, yes! Anaya James with two big back-to-back -back baskets has made it just a one-point game. Nice job jump-stopping in the lane. And scores over Ejim. And we'll keep it right here with 36.5 seconds left. Gonzaga clinging to a one-point lead. Boy, I'll tell you what, it has been the Elliott Smith and James show here in the fourth quarter. Smith started out with three threes. She has nine in the quarter. Elliott has chipped in with seven. And 10 for Anaya James. 10 of her 18 have come here in this fourth quarter. So there's about a six and a half second differential from the game clock to the shot clock. So with the Tigers, obviously you don't need to foul. You play good defense. You get the rebound, you still got one timeout left. Gonzaga has two timeouts left. Gonzaga with five team fouls, Pacific has four team fouls. Gonzaga offensively more than likely wants to get it inside the Egypt. She has 22 points, six here in the fourth quarter. Oh, how can it be yawning this one, young lady? This We've got a thriller here at the Alex G. Spano Center. Kaylin Trong, five of her 12 have come here in the fourth quarter. And Hollingsworth has also had the hot hand for the Bulldogs here in the fourth. She's knocked down a couple of threes, so seven of her 11 have also come here in this quarter. Keep an eye on Brenna Maxwell. She only has nine here. She is an outstanding shooter. Tigers come out man-to-man -man defense. Here is Trunk. Guarded by Smith. Picks her up out near midcourt. The shot clock down to 20. At what point will Trung initiate the offense? Now it's down to 10. Trung. Here is Trung. Goes down to her knee. She traveled. Yes. Great defense from the Tigers. Now with 9.8 seconds left, head coach Davis will call a timeout. And the Tigers have an opportunity to knock off the 16th rank Gonzaga Bulldogs. Boy, who would have thought it the way this one began? Gonzaga jumped out to a 12 to nothing lead. They led it by 14 at the half. They led by 11 coming into this fourth quarter. But the Tigers have not quit, and now with 9.8 seconds left, have an opportunity to not only snap a two-game losing streak, but an overall 12-game losing streak to Gonzaga and knock off the 16th-ranked team in the country. And this Tigers team has grown by leaps and bounds. You look at the two results from last year against Gonzaga, they lost each one by 41 points. So what does Coach Bradley Davis dial up here for his Tigers? Is it Liz Smith? Is it Liz Elliott inside? Is it Anaya James? You don't need a three here. You trail it by a point. The Tigers are out of timeouts. Gonzaga has one timeout. Gonzaga has five team fouls, so any foul they commit, that will send the Tigers to the line. Pacific with four team fouls. Looks like Liz Smith is going to inbound for Pacific. Williams will guard the inbound passer. Here is James, nine seconds. James, gets it off, no. 
Strong tracks it down, and they foul. The horn goes off, but there should be at least a second left. Why James had a point blank look at it. Her jumper came up short. Maddie Ennis appears to be injured for the Tigers. And I think they're going to take a look at the replay to see how much time should be on the clock. Now this will send Gonzaga to the foul line. Ennis appears to be in some pain as she makes her way towards the Tigers bench. Still waiting to see how much time they put on the clock. So point five, so if you're strong, perhaps make the first one or miss the second one. Catch the tail end of that strong foul by Liz Smith. So it's now a two-point lead. So once again, if you're strong, do you just go ahead and miss this one? Here's the shot. The clock goes as soon as the ball is touched, so they can still get a shot off. Let it go. Nope. It will not count. And the Gonzaga Bulldogs escape with a three-point victory over the Pacific Tigers. Boy, what an effort from the Tigers. But they come up just short, falling 81 to 78. They lose their third straight, and they fall to two and six in the conference, seven and 12 overall. And their record at home now is all equaled up at five and five. For Gonzaga, they escape by the skin of their teeth. They improve to 8-0 in the conference. They are now 18-2 overall. They have now won 11 in a row. And they are now 6-1 on the road. Well, joining us now is the Tigers head coach, Bradley Davis. Coach, I know it's not the results you wanted, but the, the overall effort from your team, uh, absolutely. Uh, really a great effort. Yeah, I thought the second half we really, you know, the, they crushed us on the off, on the rebounds, especially the offensive rebounds in the first half, uh, and they they still did in the second. But we just had a lot more effort uh, to get back, and we closed that gap quite a bit uh, in the second half, and and that's what really started to give us the chance and the opportunity. Uh, both teams did a better job of taking care of the ball in the second half, uh, but uh, it was key for us as well because we were just giving them too many possessions. Take me through that last play. You're down by a point. You call the timeout. Take me through that final play. Yeah, you know, we wanted to get a, a ball screen, roll rise, uh, try to get somebody going to the basket. We had, had success with it a couple of plays prior uh, and just wanted to get a good shot, get a good look for, for somebody that was hot. Well, you don't have a lot of time to think about this. Well, you got a, you got a day, and then you got Portland coming in. They are 6-1 and one in the conference, so a couple of tough back-to-back to -back ones here at home. Yeah, no, this is, it's, it's always a tough, uh, this past couple of years, it's been a tough stretch when you get Gonzaga, Portland, and, uh, you know, Portland comes in, very different style, very different team, uh, and that's the way with the WCC, there's always something back-to-back, -back. so uh, we'll, we'll, we've got a little bit extra time, being that this is an early game, and we can plan and prep and, and recuperate a little bit for uh, focusing on Portland tomorrow. Final question, I'll get at get you out of here on this one. Great atmosphere here. It's 11 a.m. It's yeah. an early start. You never know what, what it's going to be like, but just a wonderful atmosphere and a great game. No, it's, it's a great day for us and the community to be able to bring so many schools and institutions here to campus. Some of, some of these students have never been on campus, and they live you know, just a few miles away. Uh, so to be able to do that and hopefully show them a good time and, and show them what Pacific's like, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a big day for us. We take it very seriously in terms of our representation and our connection to the community. Coach, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you on Saturday. Appreciate it, Dennis. Thanks. Thank you. Well, once again, the Tigers come up just short, losing 81-78 to to the 16th rank in Zaga Bulldogs. Let's go ahead now and take a look at some numbers. And we'll begin with Gonzaga. They were led by Yvonne Ejim. She had 22. Michaela Williams uh, finished with 19 points. She had just two in the second half after a hot first half. Uh, Kaylin Strong had 14. Eliza Hollingsworth had 11. It was nine for Maxwell. And Callie Stokes had six off the bench for Gonzaga. As for Pacific, they were led by Liz Smith. She finished with 21 points. She had the hot hand to begin that 
fourth quarter, she had nine on three three-pointers. Anaya James uh, finished with 18. It was Liz Elliott with 15. They were the only three scorers in double figures for Pacific. Six apiece for Deaton and Schweitzer, who provided uh, head coach Bradley Davis with good production off the bench. Cecilia Holmberg also pitched in with five, and then Maddie Ennis finished with four points. Take a look at the overall numbers for the game. Gonzaga shot 44% from the field, 50% from behind the arc. They were 8 for 16. And then we mentioned what a great free throw shooting team. They were 91% today. Meanwhile, for Pacific, they shot it very well overall. 54%, 48%, 10 for 21 from three-point land. But they just 6 for 9 from the foul line, 67%. And the difference was the rebounding. You take a look, Gonzaga finished with 35 rebounds, 18 of those uh, coming on the offensive glass. Meanwhile, for Pacific, they finished with 28 rebounds and 11 on the offensive end. Once again, Tigers come up short. They lose 81 to 78, but we'll be right back here with you on Saturday when Portland comes to call them. That is a 2 p.m. start. But for now, one more time, our final score, Gonzaga wins it by a score of 81 to 78. Thanks so much for joining us on this early morning, early afternoon affair. I'm Dennis Ackerman. Thanks again for watching, saying so long from Stockton.